there's one women's health issue that seems to have taken center stage at the moment in the media, it's the menopause and something called perimenopause. There seems to be a real push to talk about it more, and that's a great thing. There are approximately 13 million women in the UK who are either perimenopausal or menopausal. Over 75% of them are experiencing related symptoms, from the unsettling to the downright embarrassing. And yet the majority do not ask their GPs for help. But some women are taking control and doing something about it. Okay, take it job, girls. And I found a group near me who use exercise to contend with their menopause symptoms. Hello. I just, I love how sociable this is. How have you found this class has helped you? It's just taken me straight on this path of exercising, being part of a, a group of women who, like, are prepared to share the details. It was a complete eye-opener, and I was like, oh, so this is why I've been really tired, this is yeah. why I get insomnia, this is why I've lost confidence in myself. There are thought to be 34 separate symptoms of the menopause, everything from hot flushes and fatigue to migraines and memory loss. How many years did you suffer? I reckon about 10 years. Oh my God, are you kidding me? I reckon my 40s I could write off. That is absolutely mind-blowing. No, I'm 41, so I'll be experiencing menopause but in the next 10 years. That was when years. I was starting to get these headaches and things. You know, I you sometimes know. wonder whether there are things that I'm experiencing now mm. that are little flags that I don't understand. Some fortunate women sail through the perimenopause but it's estimated that one in four experience changes that have a debilitating effect on their lives. I'm meeting Jo, who set up the menopause exercise group to find out how she coped. When did you notice that things just were not right? When I look back, things weren't quite right from when I was about 44, 45. I started going to the doctor with things like heart palpitations, breast tenderness, I had night sweats. Wake up in the night, absolutely dripping, literally dripping. Oh my goodness, my mood swings. One minute you're fine, and the next minute you are, you've got some rage going on. You're infuriated by the fact that someone just hasn't put a plate in the dishwasher. You know, ridiculously enraged by it. What about with your family life? How were you coping having three children with these symptoms? Some of the times you just feel like you're being a horrible mum. I do, I do remember one particular occasion when I did feel quite despairing, actually, and just sitting down on the floor and crying mm. and just thinking, I can't cope. From a lifestyle point of view, nothing really to complain about, but I just felt that kind of despairing that I didn't feel myself, I just did not feel myself, and I did feel I couldn't cope with everything that I had to, you know, had to manage. But it must have made you feel like you couldn't trust yourself. Yeah. Because it's so unlike you. It's, it's, it's awful, actually. You just think, oh my goodness, is that it? Am I just not going to be able to think clearly again? So I did go and see um, a, a specialist. Um, and, and I was able to have an hour plus conversation about what is perimenopause, what is menopause, what are the symptoms, um, what you can do to you know, mitigate those symptoms. And I came out of that thinking, right, OK, I know where I am now. I know what we're talking about. I know that I'm not going mad. Um, and there are things that I can do which can help me. Jo has invited me to join her for an appointment. Hi. With the menopause specialist who has been helping her to get her life back on track, Dr. Mandy Leonhardt. When you came in to see Dr. Leonhardt, did you say, I've got brain fog, breast tenderness, vaginal dryness, it's probably the menopause? No. <laughs> no, because for me, there wasn't a huge amount of information out there, I felt at the time, in terms of what is perimenopause? What is it? What is it? I've never, you know, I hadn't really heard of that term even just four years ago. The menopause is a term for when our periods stop and we can no longer conceive. It is essentially a hormone deficiency. The perimenopause is the transition leading up to it, when our hormone levels fluctuate erratically, causing the varied symptoms. When Jo told you that she was not feeling like herself, how on earth do you decipher whether she's going through the menopause when it's such a broad thing to not feel like yourself? We are doing a really thorough assessment and we are talking about women who are or over 45, we asked them about their mental health, their cognitive health, their physical symptoms, their genital symptoms. We asked about how she sleeps. A woman who previously was a really good sleeper and is now 43, 44 and starts to have insomnia, 
for no reason, then we need to think about is it the perimenopause? And all of this completes the picture towards making a decision um, whether th this could be menopausal or not. Once you are confident that somebody is going through the menopause, how do you help them? So once I've assessed them and looked at their risks and uh, their lifestyle and everything else, I, have, I usually look at what can they do to help themselves in really simple ways. Can they do more exercise? Can they stop alcohol? Alcohol is a really big problem during the perimenopause. It's an endocrine disruptor. So looking at their alcohol intake, looking at their nutrition, looking at how they move and their sleep hygiene, um, looking at, are they taking vitamin D, for example, you know, their relationships and so on. And if they are doing all the right things and if there's nothing else they can really improve on, we can also talk about HRT. Hormone replacement therapy, or HRT, works by topping up the hormone levels that have dipped. Oestrogen is the most important hormone in HRT and can alleviate many menopausal symptoms. However, progestogen should also be taken alongside oestrogen if you have a uterus. Testosterone can sometimes be prescribed to help with loss of libido. Some women find it can also help with emotional resilience, brain fog and energy levels. The combination and dosage of HRT should be carefully tailored to each woman's symptoms. So once you get prescribed a certain amount, is that it? Are you done? That's what you're taking for the rest of your life? No, and definitely not for me. So my symptoms are constantly changing. Um, and in conjunction with my, my GP, actually, I now tweak, tweak my dose. So as your body changes, as your hormones are constantly changing, your treatment changes. Mm. When you're first introduced to HRT, you know, you do sort of think, oh my goodness, you know, hormone replacement therapy, yeah. what, what is this thing? But actually, from a sort of lifestyle um, perspective, from a day-to-day -day using it, it is actually really, really simple. When Mandy showed me the gel and explained what you do, I just thought, right, that's easy, because you get out of the shower in the morning, quick, rub in, job done. What I love about this is that this is all so doable and obviously it's not right for some women but for yeah. you it's yeah. been fantastic oh yeah and you know and for me it has definitely been just that one part of the jigsaw puzzle lifestyle nutrition exercise there's so many things that factor in and hrt has just really helped me along the way so if the treatment for menopause is so doable and so convenient why does it take some women a decade to get help it just doesn't make sense to me I've been finding out about the menopause, the myths and the reality that surround this much misunderstood part of our lives. Its symptoms can be far reaching and often very intimate. There's an area of our body that we don't talk about very often and that's our vagina and our vulva. But I don't know why we don't talk about them. They're the most amazing area, it's where new life comes from. And as our body moves through the seasons and changes, so does that. I'm on my way to meet a woman who has bravely agreed to share the reality of a painful condition that affects seven out of ten menopausal women. Hi, Susanna. Hi, Lovely Joey. to meet you. Health Hi. practitioner Susanna experienced an unsettling, intimate menopause symptom for months before finally seeking help. When did you start to feel like things just weren't quite right? You didn't feel like yourself? About five years ago, when I think I was 48, heading for 49, and I was becoming uncomfortable in, in the skin of the vagina, what I now know, know is called the vulva, the whole thing. I, did, I mean, I'm a 53-year-old woman, and a few years ago, I didn't know what, what the vulva was. You are not alone in not knowing the difference between vulva and vagina. A staggering amount of people don't know the difference. According to a recent survey, 73% of women are confused about the correct term for their genitals. The vulva is the name for the external parts of the anatomy, including the labia and clitoris, and the vagina is simply the internal passage that connects the vulva to the uterus. How did it then progress? So I went riding and my toilet paper was a bit pink when I went to the loo afterwards. There was one time when I was sitting on the sofa, I got up from the sofa and it was as though something was inside me. Uh, like, and now I understand that as, as a drying of the vaginal wall. That sounds so uncomfortable and really disconcerting. Yes, and what I found was also then it affects your sex life. So then this, you know, amazing, fun thing becomes less comfortable. That makes you feel less, less sexy, less, I wouldn't say less of a woman, but it was part of being a woman. And it was so depressing to think that was 
something that I wasn't going to enjoy as much anymore. And so I, I wanted to look into what I could do about it. With the prospect of painful sex, Susanna went to her GP, who diagnosed hormone-induced vulvovaginal atrophy. Did you have any idea that vaginal dryness was part of perimenopause and menopause? No. When I finally talked to the gynaecologist, she just was very matter-of-fact about it, just went, yep, dryness. It's, it's a classic symptom of the perimenopause, and you, nobody prepares you for this. Our bodies go through such immense changes throughout our lives. Periods, hormones, babies, birth, menopause. There's a kind of a sense of, oh, well, it's just an, another crazy thing happening to our bodies. So a lot of women, I think, live with things that can be easily fixed. Vulvovaginal atrophy is when the skin of the vagina and vulva thins and becomes dry and sore. It's a really common condition, with one in three women experiencing it at some point in their lives, not just around menopause. It can make sex extremely painful. And yet over half of the women who suffer do not seek help or treatment. People talk about having babies and stuff very openly. But people don't talk about this. I don't think they talk about it enough. So it's, it's a real shock. Later, we follow Susanna as she seeks treatment. Heavy periods, light periods, unpredictable periods, painful periods. For many of us, periods are a big part of our lives and we just learn to manage them. Eight out of 10 women suffer from period-related pain at some point in their lives, with over 50% saying it's affected their ability to work. So what's out there that could actually help? Looking for some answers are three women who are tired of suffering in silence, so they're gonna put this lot to the test. Introducing Sophie, Chevy, and Emma. I plan my life around my menstrual cycle, so it'd be really great if I could try something that would perhaps um, alleviate some of the pain so that that wasn't the case anymore. Nothing really works for my periods. Nothing works that I've tried, so I guess that's why I'm here. I would like to get out of this experience not having to go to the GP and get prescriptions, but rather being able to get things over the counter, things that I need right in the moment. Period pain is caused by contractions in the womb as it works to shed and expel the lining. It's usually felt with cramping pain in your abdomen. There are a host of period pain medicines out there, but many women find that whilst they might ease a headache, they don't come close to touching period pain. We're going to look at three drug-free alternatives that claim to take away the debilitating cramps. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Hi. Take a seat. Hi. So the reason you're here is because I know that you suffer really badly from period pains. Sophie, what have your periods been like? Oh, the pain, it's just unbelievable. When someone starts a sentence with, oh, I just, I know, I can almost feel it. Yeah, the pain is indescribable. I tried paracetamol for a while, but it just didn't do it. And then I eventually went to a GP and she prescribed me cocodamol. They make me really drowsy. I miss a lot of like lectures and things. I just stay home because I, I just sleep all the time. I take painkillers for my period. It doesn't work. I might as well be eating sweets. So it's hot water bottle, chocolate, tea and crying. It's great. Oh, darling. Just stick on a film or a TV show and just, you know, let it happen. So you need something to give you some relief that isn't lifelong medication. So you've all got a basket and in those baskets are a TENS machine, a heat pad and an essential oil cooling pad. And they all claim to relieve period pain and in a fairly instant way. Let's go to the TENS machine first. It delivers a mild electrical current to affected areas via electro pads. This is thought to reduce the pain signals going to your brain and may stimulate endorphins, the body's natural painkiller. Next up is the heat pad. This Velcro belt contains a rechargeable heat pad, which delivers warmth to the abdomen and back, encouraging blood flow and relaxing the muscles, which should reduce pain. And the final product, which is also the cheapest, the essential oil cooling pads. I've never heard of a cooling pad to relieve period pain. You put them onto the area that is causing you pain, and those smells, that eucalyptus and menthol, encourages blood flow and oxygen to the area, relieving pain. What I like the idea of is just covering your entire body with them and being pain-free <laughs> for the rest of your life. Sounds what do good. you think? Yeah. It sounds like it's what my sinuses are as well. It smells really nice. 
our testers will trial all three products as per the manufacturer's instructions over a six-week period. They will test the devices for a minimum of 24 hours each throughout the most painful days of their menstrual cycle, rating them out of five for ease of use, value for money and effectiveness. All right, you've got your products, you've got your mission. Record everything and let me know how you got on, okay? Oh, thank you. Good luck. Thank you so Later, much. we'll find out which of the products really deliver. Hair loss. It affects over 8 million women in the UK. And yet, we don't discuss it openly. It seems far more socially acceptable for men to boldly go bald while for women, it's a source of shame and isolation, as comedian Zoe Lyons knows all too well. Zoe is a regular on TV and radio comedy shows and has suffered from hair loss for over 30 years. <laughs> so, yes, some of you do know I've lost my hair. I've got, I've got alopecia, which is... <laughs> I'm laughing there already. <laughs> Come on, mate. She began losing her hair as a child, and it's flared up periodically throughout her life. Typically, the patches would be about the size of sort of a 50p piece, but always quite contained. You know that it's going to take at least 12 to 18 months for that to repair. But then the hair has always come back. But then, in 2020, everything changed. The stress of pandemic and lockdown, I lost all of my work overnight. I was suddenly at home all of the time. I could feel the stress building and building and building and building and building, and I sort of knew where it would come out, and it did. It came out with my hair. It just fell out more and more and more and more and more. It was quite alarming. And it reached that tipping point where I was like, this isn't going to be like it used to be, is it? This isn't going to be 50p pieces that grow back. This is going. That was the hardest point, realising it wasn't stopping and that I would have to do, I'd have to deal with that. Um, I found that very tricky. <laughs> um, uh, just seeing it in the shower, just handfuls of hair. It's, uh, and I know it's only hair, but it really is. <laughs> Sorry. That was hard. But I've got a tremendous selection of hats now. <laughs> Determined to keep working in the public eye, Zoe decided to invest in a wig to hide her hair loss. Today, she's going back to meet the woman who made it. Hi, Amy. Amy Holt. Hi, you. Are you all right? So, you've had it a year. Yes. Has it needed any maintenance? No, no. So I feel like I'm bringing back homework for you to look at. Amy makes bespoke wigs from real hair for clients who suffer from an incredibly wide range of hair loss conditions. No, yeah, she's good. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. I'm happy with that, definitely after a year. Wigs can come in the form of full and half heads of hair or as sections called wefts, which are clipped in to embellish thinning hair. So let's see the wig on. Yes, yeah. OK. Right, so, well, my hair has changed quite a bit since I saw you. I've lost quite a bit more. There are a number of different causes for hair loss, also known as alopecia, ranging from dietary deficiencies and hormone imbalances through to autoimmune conditions or cancer treatments. In most cases, hair regrowth occurs, but occasionally hair loss can unfortunately be permanent. Female pattern hair loss may occur as part of the aging process, but there are treatments available which can help treat this. Most clients I know, once they've finally told someone, yeah. it turns out that someone has it themselves yeah. or their sister does. Yeah. And it's it's really, really common. Yeah. And that's such an issue because it feels very isolating. Totally, totally, so totally. So hats yeah. off to you yeah. to, like, put it out Well, there. hats off wigs on, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe's hair loss condition is called alopecia areata, which is caused by an autoimmune condition. There is no cure and hair regrowth can be very unpredictable. I deal with it and I want to find out about it and I want to find out about treatments that I could possibly explore. Earlier, I met Susanna, who is suffering from an incredibly common symptom of the menopause, a painful dry vagina 
medically known as vulvovaginal atrophy. Susanna did her research and found a private gynaecologist called Dr. Tanya Adib. Hello. Hi. Lovely to see you. Nice to see you. She runs a specialist clinic for gynaecological issues that can arise when your hormone levels become erratic. When you first came for your first consultation, were you nervous to talk about it openly? Yes, it was unusual, but I just reminded myself that this is what Tanya does for a living and I should just be very honest about it. And, and what Tanya said to me that was so helpful was you can't be happy with an unhappy <laughs> vagina. And I thought... Well, I mean, I want that. Do you right. I you want know? that on a T-shirt. Yeah. That is the best quote ever. You can't be happy with an unhappy vagina. Everyone should have a happy vagina. Absolutely, absolutely. And I, and I think that it, so definitely in this country, there's too much of a stigma attached to it. Why is there so much shame specifically around vaginal dryness? I think women find it difficult to talk about vaginal dryness because it's, it's so intimate, it's so personal, and I think it is very difficult to share. Vulvovaginal atrophy is caused by the decrease in oestrogen. The body then makes less moisture-rich collagen and blood flow is reduced to the area. This makes the skin tissue of the vagina and vulva thinner, drier, less elastic and more fragile. Women experience dryness, discomfort, itching, burning, rubbing. They may experience bleeding when they're walking and it just all feels really uncomfortable. Do you think some women experience these symptoms and think, well, it's not a life-threatening condition, I'll just try and live with it, not realising that they can get help and live like a really happy, vibrant life? It's not a trivial complaint, and it really severely, negatively affects the quality of lives of women. It affects their daily functioning, whether they can leave their homes, whether they can work. It affects their relationships, their self-confidence and their happiness and I really believe it really needs to be properly addressed. There are a number of different ways to successfully treat vulvovaginal atrophy. It can be relieved with over-the-counter lubricants and moisturizers priced at around 12 pounds, or your doctor can prescribe estrogen creams or pessaries. But Dr. Adib also uses a state-of-the-art laser therapy treatment. How does it work? Which bit goes where? So I attach the probe to here, and there's one probe for the vagina and another one for the vulva. So this is a laser machine. I don't necessarily want a laser anywhere near my vulva, but this isn't something to be scared of. It's not. Laser is a really frightening term. <laughs> Actually, it's just little jets of carbon dioxide okay. that just regenerate the collagen. During the 10-minute procedure, jets of CO2 cause tiny lesions in the walls of the vagina which triggers the body to produce more moisture-rich collagen. Dr. Adib's patients have reported a marked difference just a few weeks after one treatment, but she advises three sessions and an annual maintenance treatment to keep symptoms at bay. So a woman might be experiencing really painful sex, which might really destroy a relationship. She might not be able to go to work, she's in so much discomfort, bleeding when she's walking, all of those awful debilitating symptoms. And after 10 minutes on this machine, she can begin to get relief. Yes. It's a very clever laser. However, this treatment is not yet available on the NHS and will set you back between 500 and 700 pounds per session. It's time for Susanna's treatment. All right, bottom bits off, bottom bits off, yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna start the treatment now. The probe going in the vagina. So Susanna's getting her treatment right now. She's just gone in. And it's great to know that there is a solution to something that is really debilitating and really changes your quality of life. So all finished. I've literally just sat down. Hmm. That That's is so very, quick. very quick treatment. Well, can I come and see the patient? Yes, yes. <laughs> Hi. So is that you done then? That's me done. Yeah. That's amazingly fast. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it, it really isn't a, a lengthy treatment at all. Uh, it's kind of fairly in out and and Tanya makes it all feel very quick and easy. Susanna will return to the clinic every 12 months for a maintenance treatment. Did it work? How did that feel? It did work. I could tell after a few days of, of the first treatment, everything was just plump and youthful looking again, which was so nice. How did it affect sex? Did it become fun again? Yes. 
it's so much easier and it it's how I felt about my body as well you know so I so so I felt more sexy there is something we can do about this that makes you feel good again earlier we met Emma Sophie and Chevy all of whom suffer from horrendous period pains We've asked them to test drive three different products that claim to take the edge off the aches. There's a TENS machine, which uses mild electrical pulses, a rechargeable heat pad, which claims to relax the painful area, and essential oil cooling patches, which release menthol and eucalyptus oils to the affected area over a 12-hour period. Chronic period pains have had a profound effect on the lives of these young women. When I came to uni, I got that sense of freedom, you know, I get to do what I want, I'm by myself, I'm independent. But then there's always my period that's chaining me down, so it almost has a control over me. There's always that couple days a month where no matter what I am in the world, it could be a uni room, it could be my house, it could be a friend's house, I'll be bed bound. The pain can be so excruciating sometimes that I I just don't know how to cope. I've got a beyond lovely boyfriend. never complains. He is there for back rubs, he is there for running out to get sanity products. Yes, he may buy the wrong ones after me telling him to get the right ones several times, but that's okay. If one of the products works, then it like Christmas come early, the dream come true. It seems perfectly acceptable to say, I need to have a day off because I've got diarrhea. And yet, somehow, I can't come because I've got a, a painful period. That wouldn't go down quite as well. This trial represents hope for me because potentially it could change my life. Testing takes place over a six week period and begins at the first twinge of period cramps. Each tester will use every product for the recommended duration to treat the pain. So will any of these high street pain management gadgets work? They're starting with the TENS machine. These look like headphones, pretty sure they're not. So it looks like I can use it on my shoulders, back, abdomen, arms, legs, feet and buttocks. Don't think I'll need it for my buttocks, but great, I can use it for my abdomen. Frequencies, pulse width. The pulses the electrodes emit are thought to reduce the pain signals going to your brain. Oh my God, there's so many different modes. It feels like massage, acupuncture, beating. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd put that in an instruction manual. Come on, so you peel it off. Place the TENS adhesive gel pads to the treatment areas. Can't really feel anything at the moment. Oh, OK. Put up the intensity a bit. Oh, wow. <laughs> it feels really weird. So I'm assuming you mimics someone massaging you with an elbow. Next, it's the heat pad. This is a nice box. I know from previous experiences that hot water bottles have worked, so high hopes for this. Go tuck it in a little bit. Let's get my T-shirt down over it. OK, it's a little bit more obvious because it's quite chunky. It's really easy to use. You just press on. I suspect by tonight my period pain will be quite bad. So this is really relieving, even already. Obviously, it's a bit thick because it has to be, but it's very thin compared to my hot water bottle. Instantly what I need. That's really nice. Finally, it's the essential oil cooling patches. They have a very strong smell. Smell like vapor rub. Be careful when peeling the protective paper back as the patch can stick to itself. I see, it's like a massive stinky plaster. Well, that didn't work, did it? Almost too sticky for their own good, I think. (laughs) <laughs> oh, I've made a right meal of it already. It's feeling cold, which I guess is a nice sensation in a way. These ones would definitely help me stay under the radar in terms of having my period. Later on, we'll find out how our testers got on with the products. Comedian Zoe Lyons has recently lost most of her hair due to a condition called alopecia. She wants to try and understand why it suddenly got so much worse and if there's anything she can do to encourage it to grow back. I have come to talk to a dermatologist who is a specialist on alopecia. Actually, I'm really looking forward to seeing if there's A, anything else I could be doing, 
but more importantly, if when she looks at me, she thinks that there are signs of regrowth and that perhaps maybe my alopecia is calming down. I don't know, we'll see. That's my hope and my heart. Consultant dermatologist Vicky Jolliffe is one of the country's leading experts in hair disorders. She treats patients from all over the country who are desperate for help. I sometimes feel that it's only when you've got a problem with your hair that you realise actually how important hair is. It's so fundamental to our whole essence and having a problem and shedding and losing hair is absolutely devastating. The hair loss treatment market in the UK is worth over £6.6 .6 million. There are a number of treatments aimed at stimulating hair growth, ranging from steroids to microneedling, depending on the underlying cause. None, however, have guaranteed results and some may have significant side effects. Occasionally the hair is not as good at regrowing and we don't always understand why, but one has to be sometimes a little guarded with certain people about how likely they are to regrow hair. Come in. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, Zoe. Lovely to meet you. Lovely to Thank meet Thank you very you much too, for coming you. to see me. Oh, Do have a seat. I'd love to uh, find out a little bit more about your story and how, how I can help. I've been dealing with alopecia areata on and off since I was a child. There was uh, a, a lot of sort of domestic upheaval at that point in my life, so it was quite a sort of stressful period of time for me. But right, so. this particular episode has been quite extreme. It's the most uh, dramatic episode that I've had of it. Yes. I'm very interested to hear you talking about the possible role of stress in triggering this, because... This is something I hear very often from patients and certainly those of us like myself who have a special interest in looking after people with hair disorders very passionately believe that stress is an important trigger um, for particularly for autoimmune conditions such as alopecia areata. Would you be okay if I just had a look at your hair? Sure, please? yeah. Thank you absolutely. very much. C come and have a seat over here. We shed up to 100 hairs every day, which is perfectly normal. However, for people with autoimmune hair loss conditions, it can fall out in unpredictable ways, from localised areas to severe attacks where all of their hair can go in just a matter of months. OK, so I'm just going to have a look at your scalp. So yes. look with my lens, if that's OK. Have a look here. So I'm just having a look round here yeah. to look for regrowth and also just to look to see if you've got any active areas of yeah. alopecia areata. We, we see some quite specific features when it's active. It's very common for any new hair to grow back completely white because the pigment has been damaged, but in most cases, it eventually regains its original colour. So what I'm basically seeing is alopecia areata in a recovery phase. I'm delighted that you can see stuff coming back mm. in. That's great news yeah, for me. Um, I mean, moving forward, is there anything that you'd suggest that I should be doing from this point onwards. Sounds a bit obvious and sometimes yeah. hard to do is, is managing your stress levels and, yeah. you know, thinking not just for this episode, but moving forward in life about how you're going to deal with that. And I think that's really important here. Yeah. The other thing that I think is important is to make sure that your vitamin D levels are, are adequate. Yeah. So if you haven't had those measured already, I'd get them checked and take vitamin D supplementation because there is a bit of evidence that if you have low vitamin D levels, the alopecia areata is, is less likely to recover sort of so quickly. Okay. And I'd also like to be happy that your thyroid function is completely okay. Yeah. I'm so, so happy that I came to see Vicky. I will massively reduce my stress levels and create, create the best environment for my hair to grow back in. If it grows back, it's not guaranteed, but I've accepted that. Six weeks ago, we asked three women, all who suffer from excruciating periods, to test out three products to see if they can alleviate the pain. Their brief was to use the products as per instructions whenever the pain kicked in. All three repeatedly tested the TENS machines, heat pads and essential oils cooling patches throughout their menstrual cycle and reported back regularly on how they fared. There's Emma. I just woke up from my nap. My heat pad is still on. It's really comfortable. I'm in no pain at all. It's definitely one of the best things I've used so far. Chevy. Right now I'm on setting five and I'm gonna put the intensity higher. And Sophie. I've got the cooling pads on. I don't think that you can see them under these clothes, which is great. Each product uses a different principle to ease the aches. 
the TENS machine delivers mild electrical pulses to block pain receptors. The rechargeable heat pad relaxes the cramping areas and increases blood flow there. And the essential oil cooling patches release menthol and eucalyptus oils at the source of the discomfort. Well, after well and truly putting them through their paces, they're back to give us their verdict. Emma and Sophie, Hello. so nice to see you. And nice to you. see you. We are actually one person short. Chevy's not very well today. But fear not, she sent me the videos with her scores. The testers have rated all three products out of five in three different categories. Ease of use, value for money, and effectiveness. The scores in each category will then be averaged and added together to reveal the overall winner with a score out of a total of 15. So I asked you to test three products, be really honest about them, and then pick your favorite. Are you ready for the results? Yes. Yeah. yes. In last place, and I will say I'm quite surprised, the TENS machine. Mm. Why did you not get on with the TENS machine? It was just brutal. It just got worse and worse and worse. And my boyfriend was looking at me going, are you OK? I actually put it on him at one point. I went, have a period, here you go. I found that it did help with the pain. The problems that I faced with it were the settings. There were loads of settings. You need simplicity. Yeah. OK. Interestingly, it did actually work for Chevy. I used it a lot, a lot on my lower back and it was a lot easier to use as well because it's small, so I could put it in my back pocket. And because it mimics the tension of someone massaging you, it did really help. Although the testers didn't rate it highly for ease of use or value, it did go some way to reduce pain for two of them, giving it an overall score of 7 out of 15. So second place is, in fact, the cooling pads. Yeah, I did enjoy them. I actually thought they were pretty reasonable. Um, a little bit more expensive than your average over-the-counter medication or drugs, whatever. And I actually did see them in shops. Sophie, what about you? So I found it helpful. I found it took the edge off the pain. I'm not sure that I, I would agree that they were good value for money because I ended up wasting quite a few because they were so sticky that they stuck in on each other. They were OK sticking on. They were all right. I think during summertime, they'd be great, um, especially if you're on your period and, you know, you, you're sweating or anything. I think they'd be great to maintain your cool and they are quite refreshing. But I think when it comes to period pain, they don't really do anything. Although they didn't work for Chevy, Sophie and Emma did get some relief and would use them again. However, they weren't the easiest to apply. When we averaged out the scores from our three plucky testers, the patches got an overall score of 7.5 out of 15. So the winner is the almighty heat pad. So why did you pick the heat pad? Because it's just so immediate. Like even a hot water bottle, you're in bed, you're lying down. I've, even this week, I had the worst cramps known to man. and I just couldn't get out. I couldn't face getting out of the bed to get into the cold, to boil a kettle, get a hot water bottle. This was on the floor next to me, and I just went... Come to mama. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Give me that love. And it's hot within 10 seconds. Oh, my goodness. So it's and just incredible. And the level of pain, let's say that your cramps were a level 10, where did yeah. they go mm. down to once you put that on? After about five, 10 minutes with that, I would say at least a four or a five. That's a huge change. Mm -hmm. I really felt that this one took the edge off the pain. I also found it very easy to use, which is quite important. That was definitely my favourite uh, product. And the fact that I could take like a portable hot water bag with me all the time and it's thin and I can wear it under my clothes and just wear it. It was just great. I, I would just use it all the time. Is it quite discreet? Can you wear it around while you're doing your life, but jump over it? That's the probably only con to it because you've got the pack on the side, which is quite chunky. But because I'm sat down at work 90% of the time, I'm like, <laughs> you know, buddy, snaffling it away. <laughs> and everyone's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. <laughs> I am not smuggling stationery, Janet. Leave me alone. <laughs> exactly. So um, I found it really lovely. I found it really beneficial. Um, and it's definitely my favourite product. I am absolutely thrilled. This was undoubtedly a big hit with the testers, with an impressive score of 14 out of 15. The heat pad is the winner. The only criticism was although each charge lasted around two hours, it took longer than expected to recharge. 
you and Emma and Chevy have all really responded very differently to each of the products. Yes, the heat pad came out on top, but you liked the other things in different mm. ways. Chevy really liked the TENS machine. You quite liked the cool pads. But it says to me that if you're a woman suffering with period pains, you do need to try lots of different things mm -hmm. to find what works for you. So it sounds like these products have actually been genuinely really useful. For me, it is a massive uh, life-changing experience, to be honest, to have that. It makes a period of time where I'm able to walk, uh, which I mean, that's yeah. enormous. <laughs> yeah, is actually quite an emotional thing for me, you know, to know that, that, that actually there is kind of light at the end of the tunnel. Oh God, that's huge. Thank you so much for taking time for this experiment. And I'm over the moon that you and also Chevy have found something that can help alleviate the pain. It just says to me that you really should never suffer in silence, but try lots of different things because there could be something that could work for you. The content within this series is for information only and should not be taken as professional medical advice. You should consult a healthcare professional to seek medical advice, diagnosis or treatment.